everyone. Thank you very much for choosing to come to this session. I was a little bit worried there might be anyone here and I'm sort of talking to my colleagues, which they already know about. So thank you very much for coming here. Um, my name is Twyla Mart. I'm the resourcing manager for East Kent Hospitals University NHS Foundation Trust. I will shorten that as we go along. And I'm here with my colleagues. Yeah, hi there. I'm Charlotte Burford. I work for Kent County Council within the Kent Supportive Employment Team. So we're a supporting employment provider. I'm John Crawley and I work for East Kent College and I'm a job coach on the our teachers program which we will talk about later. Okay. okay, so what I'm going to talk to you all about today is a bit about um, what we're currently doing at East Kent Hospitals at the moment and what we are planning to do in the future. So some background around that is, as you heard in the speech this morning, we have the NHS England's Five Year Forward programme, which are asking NHS employers to look at trying to recruit more people with learning disabilities. So removing those barriers that are predominantly in place at the moment. The uh, Care Quality Commission is also saying that um, our staff should represent our community. And you all met Daniel Marsden, the presenter this morning. He's done some research, which was published in the HSJ to show that if you employ more people with uh, learning disabilities, it can improve patient experience. Now, one of the reasons why Daniel um, did, that, um, did that piece of work was around um, a program that we implemented back in 2010 called uh, Project Search. I don't know if any of you have heard about it. Basically, it started in America and it came over to the UK where um, the idea was to try to provide young adults with learning disabilities the opportunity to have real work while gaining qualifications and at the end the target was to get them in employment. There were lots of young adults just in the education system going from course to course to course and just weren't quite being given those opportunities to get that, that experience and those skills in place to be employed in the end. So. Um, I don't come from a learning disability background at all, I work in HR, um, but a job came up to set what was Project Search up at the time, so I felt interested in it, I went for it and I was very successful in getting the job, which was great, and that was to set it up from scratch. Very hard work, I have to say. So there were lots of different things we had to organise. We had to set up a partnership with my colleagues from Kent Sports Employment and East Kent College, because East Kent College were providing the educational side, we had to find a room for classroom because we called them interns. They would come in every day, they'd have a set room for a classroom. They would come in and do their learning and then they would go out and do real jobs within our hospital. So they had proper job descriptions. The idea was they had the full experience. They would then come back at the end of the day, they would summarise what their day looked like and then they would go home. They only had the holidays off. It was basically you had to come in and do 9 to 5, or it was 9 to 3.30 at the time. Um, so we did initially come across a lot of problems, such as, I think one young lady, we didn't know where she was, and we found her in the cupboard eating chocolates that the nurses got. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, that was fine. Um, some of the interns really struggled. They weren't used to going somewhere for 9 o'clock. They'd get up when it was time to go to college. So changing their mentality and making them understand the working world was very was very different moving forward. So I was very much part of that first year and I have to say from the start of that the, the course in 2010 and then seeing them graduate at the end, I think about three or four of them got employment within within my trust, which was really great. And that was doing portaling work, we had a case note collection clerk. Previous ones we've had, um, they've ended up doing a healthcare assistant on coronary care unit. So, and it's not just about being employed by our hospitals. We don't guarantee guarantee them the job at the end. We're just opening that door and giving them the opportunity. So, other individuals have got jobs outside of the trust as well, which we see as a success. So, we're now just about to start year six. We interviewed yesterday from the assessment day. So, we're now six years on. And it's changed, so we now don't come under that umbrella of project search. We've, had, we've learned, we've adapted it where we've needed to, and we now call it Bright Futures. So, create our own logo, 
as a partnership, we've evolved very much so as well. Um, and we have looked at, at opening up to people with physical disabilities as well, just learning disabilities. So very much dependent on, um, on their entitlements, which I'm sure Charlotte can talk to you a bit later about. It has evolved in it and, and we are where we are today with it. Okay. So I'm now going to ask if Charlotte wants to talk about the cancer support. No, sorry, John. You'll talk about the college path involvement. Um, the course is accredited by LASER and it's, it's, it's set up level one and it's a 20 credit course. Um, I find talking to you a little bit about um, the, a week in the life of an uh, intern, actually, one of our features, of course, at this moment in time. At this time, we think they work on, everybody works Monday to Friday, and Monday tends to be the academic day where people learn. Um, um, theoretical skills about gaming and playing, how to buy a CV, where to look, where our jobs advertise, how do I get on the job that, what do I have to do, down to um, reading lots of different modules we're in there. From Tuesday through to Friday, people are actually working on walks, doing real work, uh, working alongside different members of staff, as in the hospital, just as Twyla alluded to. There's many different types of jobs that people actually do. At uh, present, we are working in the ambulatory um, care units, coronary care units, AME services. We just got into AME services. Very busy environment, but our work is really appreciated in the department members of staff. And we do portroom jobs and actually work within sorry, the chefs in the kitchen as well as the um, canteen. There are lots of people that work. If people have an interest, in what they care to them and bring them through. And people throughout the year will get three different areas where they can actually work. It's three 10 week blocks. And if people have an interest in care for inside, we back that up by trying to get people um, basic food hygiene certificates. We do online courses at people and support people through that. There is two job site, two sort of job coaches mainly on site at all times. And we're actually there to support a person whilst they're actually working in whichever area they actually wanted, they wanted to be in. Um, of a Wednesday afternoon, we have what we call a job club. And within that job club, we do mock interviews for people. But we start off with the basics, right, and helping people to write out a CV, showing people where they can actually be in, where the jobs are actually advertised, get people used to actually going online to try and find a job. Helping people with application forms, we found that lots of people have never done that before. And it's just actually trying to get people into an interview. We actually do teach interview skills as well during that process. Um, that's all really. Yeah, okay. So just to give you a bit of a flavour about Kids Sports, we've been working with Kids Employment. So our referral group is through KCC Care Management. So how that links to Bright Futures is, as a service, if we are working um, with um, a young person, they've identified that actually they want to come onto the Bright Futures course. Obviously, it is a college course, so they are more than able to apply. But what we are able to do as a service is actually to support them. So John and Luke are the East Kent College job coaches, but we actually provide a job coach as well. Not going to be on site as much as um, the job coaches because it very much depends on whether, in a sense, they are kids or two employment students. So our involvement is very much about kind of liaising with the special schools, liaising with the learning disability teams prior to the course actually being advertised as far well as we had the um, recruitment day yesterday. So we're out there and we're promoting the course, I say, identifying our clients. And they may be clients that we're already working with or we're actually saying, you know, this is a really great opportunity. We'll support them through the course. And if they're not successful in gaining employment, then we're able to carry on with that support. And I think that's really, really key because obviously, you know, the intention is that someone will move into employment either with the NHS, one of the providers that obviously works within the hospital, but of course that's not guaranteed. So as a service, we're able to say actually, you know, we can provide that ongoing support. But um, and Having said that, the students that actually go onto the course during the year may not have a care manager, but that's again our service. We're able to have those conversations and say that we're able to support you kind of moving forward. So that's our involvement, really. Okay, okay so as a trust, we're part of Quite Futures, and that's been really successful for us and, and it's been really great. We've 
we can always do more, can't we? So when um, NHS England um, said about um, signing a pledge to remove barriers, we had conversations around, well, we, we're doing that, and that's great, but there must be more, so what can we do? So um, it's taken time, um, as some of you who I'm sure are working in the public sector uh, just trust to get a decision takes a very long time. So it's taken me a couple of months to get approval by our executive board, but a couple of weeks ago they're all on board and um, we're now going to be moving forwards with it. And the proposal is to review our recruitment process. So how can we remove those barriers? Do we need to have application forms or can we just accept CVs? Do we have to have an interview day on a panel or could we have an assessment day? Could we have a work trial? How, what would that look like? How would that work? Um, so we need to look at that and then we can, we can Im implement that into our daily recruitment activity for other positions. But we want to look at doing some job carving. So this is where, um, as an organisation, we need to work with a partner to, um, to gain some guidance. But looking within, say, a ward environment, you may have a healthcare assistant who's packing the, um, sorting out the store cupboard. You may then have a registered nurse who's doing the observations on the patients. You then may have a ward manager who's getting ready for a senior um, multidisciplinary team meeting. So if you carved certain elements out of those different jobs and created a job role, especially for somebody with a learned disability, then um, we could put that out to charities and organisations to say, this is the job that we have. We would band it, make it more salary is and do you have people doing and then with our adapted recruitment process we would move forward with that also what we would need to work with um, our selected partner would be around um, communicating to our stakeholders to our board managers to our department managers to get them on board to do some awareness training because as we found with bright futures initially the staff were a bit oh, I'm not sure if I want to be involved in this or what, what is that so at one of our hostels where Bright Futures is in Margate, I think perceptions have changed and I know you can definitely see a difference. And we want to look at doing this in our other two main hospitals, only on a small scale initially to see how it works. And as I say, it's something that we could roll out um, a bit more in the future. So um, also part of what can we do um, moving forward is around I've spoken, I say to you that Bright Futures is a success, but actually we've not been recording the numbers, we don't know how many people have got employment once they've left Bright Futures, because um, as a trust we don't have access to that. So um, Daniel Marsden is going to do some research looking at that, which um, I'm sure he'll get published in the end, but that will be really useful to share with everybody once that's done as well. So really it's the next step, so we've got that approval, we can now start to move forward and the first thing we need to do is sign the pledge. Now we didn't want to sign the pledge until we had something in place and what we wanted to know. So hopefully by the end of the week I'm going to go to Matthew Kershaw, our Chief Exec, and say let's get this going and uh, we can communicate it. We also need to present our action plan to, um, to NHS England and Health Education in Kent, Sunny and Sussex. We need the resources to resources, excuse me, to evaluate the uh, bright futures and, and moving forward with the job carving that we spoke about. And also, it's really important that we share what we do um, with everybody, so that if other people want to do things similar or vice versa, if anybody knows more about job carving, it would be really, it would be really good for us to know. And that is.